we know from trying to build robots how far short we are of living things. So let's put it very bluntly. The best robot that you come across is less effective than a slug. Little squishy thing you might not think of as being an intelligent animal. It lives in an environment, it multiplies. I had them climbing up my drain pipe into my kitchen to eat the geraniums on the windowsill. Funny. Quite clever. Could a robot do that? I think not. So what a slug can do and a robot cannot do is live independently in an, an environment which it doesn't control. It's really well adapted to that and it can reproduce. Now look at Sarah. If you could see, stretching back invisibly into the distance, all of the effort that went into this robot, what would you see? Yes, all right, you'd see the designers who made this head in Poland. Where did they get their materials from? They got some of this from a plastics factory. Where did they get their materials from? People drilling out on the ocean to get oil. The metal came from mines. The mines used machinery, which itself had to be built by other human beings. Behind every robot, you'll see a track of human activity, which probably goes back several hundred years, if you track it all back to mm -hmm. the original piece of human effort. Put two rabbits in a cage, you get more rabbits. You will never get more robots while they have to carry that huge train of human effort behind them. We are nowhere near a situation in which robots could live autonomously and reproduce. A living thing is a system in which all of it is a set of processes balancing off each other. Our bodies, our brains, they're not separate components plugged together, they're a set of interconnected processes which stay dynamically in balance until they don't and then we die. What you've got here is a computer and metal. Uh, the rust in that metal is not connected to the computer in the brain. Your brain is looking after all the cells in your skin. So a living thing and a robot are qualitatively different things. Mm -hmm. The more you do robots, the more admiration you have for living things. And if I would give, give you a simple answer, robots will never take over the world until they can live for more than three hours without having batteries recharged. Someone has to recharge their batteries. Where does the electricity come from? We make that too. So in some sense, this idea that robots will take over the world, while it's understandable, it's the, the old fear of technology, Frankenstein and still further back, is completely unrealistic. It fails to understand living things, it fails to understand that intelligence is about living in the world, not about doing complicated problems or being a chess champion, and about being able to reproduce and survive and create social societies in which culture is propagated and children are brought up. So the, whole, the question in some sense just doesn't understand life. Life is an amazing thing, and the more you do robotics, the more you realise how amazing it really is.